If Allah loves you, He makes you rich with money. Here is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praising the poor people who are righteous, of course. If Allah subhanahu wa taala loved people based on the blessings He gives them, then why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself was not wealthy? He didn't even like it. The other way around as well. If Allah loves only the poor people of wealth, why would He give Dawood and Sulaiman and Yusuf السلام, among the greatest kingdom on earth? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved you only when you see someone healthy, then why did He make Prophet Ayyub السلام, so sick for so many years? Even some people used to say, look at this man Ayyub. If he hadn't done something terribly wrong, Allah would not put him through this hardship. Isn't that correct? And people moved away from him. They isolated him because they didn't want to get jinxed by him. They thought he's a non-righteous man, evil man. We don't want to get this, you know, mirrored into our family. Some people live long. Allah must love them. Some people live short. What have they done? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for a person is a sign that you live long, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not allow Fir'aun to be in his kingdom and sit and live long. In fact, he preserved his body so that no one can ever forget him. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like a person, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took someone's life early, which meant that he doesn't love him, he wouldn't take the Prophet sallallahu child, Al-Qasim and Ibrahim at the age of two years old. So my brothers and sisters, love of Allah is not based on the amount of blessings you have in this world or the lack of it. It has nothing to do with that. Have you ever heard of happiness and contentment? The difference between happiness and contentment is that happiness is temporary, contentment is forever. And contentment in Arabic is called qana'a, qana'a, to be satisfied and content with whatever you have. It doesn't matter what state the Muslim is, the mu'min is, you have contentment. You don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are in prison, you look at it as a seclusion between you and Allah. If you are out in the open, you see that Allah has given you a duty you have to give, you have to do. If you have wealth, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you responsibility to use that wealth in some good way. If you don't have wealth, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with poverty and you're going to learn from it for others. Because the biggest people who really are the most humble, you'll find the homeless people. You give them, they give for some reason. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you children, it means he's testing you with your children somehow. Or he is honoring you with the children, but it's a responsibility. He gets you married, it's a responsibility. But comes all the blessings come with it. If he keeps you single, again, it's a responsibility. Whatever it may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you tests and responsibilities. And with it, you will rise or fall. It's up to you. But here's the thing. Allah will not bear you more than what you can bear. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not burden a soul with more than what they can bear. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then how come some people say, I can't bear it anymore? Brothers and sisters, this is you making that decision. Wallahi, this is us making that decision. There are so many YouTube clips from non-Muslims who have learned from us, from the past, how to motivate people to move forward and not give up. But Allah sent the Messenger وسلم, to teach us that from the beginning. Yaqub alayhi salam said to his, his children who tried to kill his own son Yusuf after many years, he said to them, لا تيأسوا من روح الله Do not give up from the mercy of Allah. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إنه لا يأسوا من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون The only ones who give up on Allah's mercy are the disbelievers in Allah. Because they don't trust Allah's mercy. Those are the people who say, What have I ever done for God to do this to me? What have I ever done so God doesn't give me and gives the other person? These are people who deny Allah's favors and blessings. These are the ones who despair from His mercy. Because they don't have any trust in his mercy, subhanahu. And he said to his sons, don't. And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. Look what he gave Yusuf alayhi salam. And what Yusuf alayhi salam said in the end, after all the dungeon, all the prison, all the hardship. What did he say? On his throne. Rabbi, my Lord, you are the one who gave me this kingdom. And you are the one who taught me the knowledge that I know. Oh Allah, I ask you only to make me die as a Muslim. And make me join with the righteous. You know, al-hikni in Arabic means someone's ahead of you and you're running up to them. You're chasing them. You're in the back row. Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, 
says, oh Allah, even in the back row, I'm happy with that. Let me follow the righteous. This is a form of humbleness. That if you think that you are such a righteous person and you boast about that, then these are the people who actually forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you think of yourself too good, you fail. And when you think of yourself too low, you'll never rise. But stay somewhere in the middle. My brothers and sisters in Islam, so what are the signs of Allah's love for you? And what are the signs in you that you love Him? The first is that you are a voluntary follower, meaning no one's forcing you. You are a voluntary follower of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in the Quran, say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah will love you in return. Following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah loves you. Now following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is how? Is it just in the, in the white thawb? In my beard? In the miswak? In the hat? In that that I eat with my hands? Or I sleep on my right? No. Ittiba' al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what he said in the following hadith. You want to know? After the worship, we all know the worship and the sunan of worship, he said, Atadruna man al Muslim? He said to his companions, Do you know what a Muslim is? They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'la. Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, Al Muslim man salima lisanahu, man salima nasu min lisanihi wa yadih. A Muslim is someone whom the people are safeguarded from his or her tongue and his hands. Then he said, Atadruna man al Mu'min? Do you know what the Mu'min is? A bit higher than a Muslim? Believer? They said Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, Al Mu'minu man aminahu al nasu ala amwalihim wa anfusihim. A Mu'min is somebody whom people feel safe with their wealth and their honor and self with them. They can trust them with their wealth and their honor. You do business with them, they're not going to cheat you. They're not going to lie to you. They're not going to deny you. themselves, their family, their children. Their bodies, their honor, you won't backbite them. You won't gossip about them. You won't tell about their secrets. You won't harm them. When you get angry, you won't hit them. You won't abuse them. Sometimes you look at people and you find them like that, don't you? You think, subhanAllah, you know what? I will never deal in business except with that person. And sometimes people tell you, if you ever want to deal in business with anyone, go to that person. You heard that? That person. And it's like people don't really know them, but they hear all this good about them, right? And everybody starts to point to that person. No, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are like that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed your acceptance in earth. He has made you a trustworthy person whom the angels love. Why? Because people can trust you with their bodies, their honor, and their wealth. Then he said, Wal Mujahid, and the one who does jihad, Alladhi jahada nafsahu ala fi ta'atillah. He or she is the one who strives against himself in continuing to worship Allah and obey Him as much as they can. Muhajir, and he who migrates really, man hajar man hajar al khataya wal maasi wal dunub. The one who truly migrates is the one who migrates from their sins and their mistakes. Meaning, not all sins, the major sins. You have a bad habit of sin, and finally you're able to migrate from it and never return to it. As for minor sins, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them so long as you continue to do your acts of worship. Any tiny little good deed that you do without taking it for granted is a sadaqah. Even Mu'ad said, Ya Rasulullah, he said, if I say la ilaha illallah, is that a good deed? He said, among the best deeds, Ya Mu'ad. Just say la ilaha illallah, it wipes away your little sins. One man said, Ya Rasulullah, I touched a woman. He said, I touched her. And so Rasulullah sallallahu he said to him, you touched a woman? He said, what do you mean you touched a woman? He said, I touched her. He says, did you do zina? He says, no. He says, did you do the stuff that husband and wife? He goes, no, I didn't do that. He said, just touched her and hugged her. He said, pray your salat, do your good deeds and we'll wipe it away. Now I can hear the young people using this as an excuse. I can hear you, you're saying it just by thinking I can hear it. Does that mean that I can do haram, just pray and it's all gone? Obviously not. You can't trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling this young man who has this energy and hormones. He's telling him, go 
to do good acts because good acts what they do is they are rehabilitation they clean you and they clean your mentality and they make you feel embarrassed because when you become better and you remember Allah you are more likely to not return to that sin and to feel ashamed of it but if you don't follow up a good deed then there's no rehab we've all told our children these things don't we get off the phone get off the PlayStation get off the game words don't work with kids they just laugh at you get off yeah all right you got to seriously put restrictions and replace it with something else that gives them the same or similar rewards something else that, that they enjoy my brothers and sisters in Islam therefore whoever follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah loves them طيب, a second one the ones who are humble and easy with their brothers and sisters in Islam if you do not if you do not strive and struggle in the cause of Allah Allah will exchange you with another people whom he loves and they love him and then he describes them they are humble with their brothers and sisters and those who are enemies of Islam they are honorable against them they don't they're not they don't put their heads down to them no they're aware but with the believers they are humble now some brothers and sisters that I've heard of not everyone, not everyone, inshallah, not here. I've seen it happen before. When the dunya creeps into our hearts and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind of their only lip service, not really in your heart, I come to you and I say, Brother, how much do you want for the car? You say, Well, brother, $10,000. I say, What are you talking about? I saw it for 9000 over there. He says, Khalas, brother, take it for 9000 Then I say to you, Give me a better, a better deal than 9000 How about 8000 he says, brother, I can't. This is it. And then I say to you, brother, you've got a love for your brother, what you love for yourself. I start blackmailing you with the hadith. I use the din to blackmail my brothers and sisters. This is the opposite of humbleness. Subhanallah, that sahabi, I think it was Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Allahu A'lam, I'm not, don't hold me to it. He went to buy a camel. <laughs> okay, back 1,400 years ago. He went to buy a camel from another companion, from a Muslim, a mu'min. He says, how much do you want for the camel? He says, give me uh, five dinars. He looks around at the camel. He says, no. He says, less? He says, no, I think it deserves more than that. I'll give you six. He says, take it for six. He goes, just a second. He's looking at it. Obviously, when you're going to buy a car, you have to look around and check it. He's checking the camel a little bit more. He says, no, no. I think, I think it needs seven, seven dinars. Will you accept seven? And why not? And the Sahabi kept going around the camel more and more. The more he saw this camel, or was it a horse? The point is, he saw that it was worth much more than five. Double its amount. He says, I'll give you ten dinars for it. He says, you've given me double? He says, yes. For I heard the Prophet wasallam say, you will not receive piety until the love for your brother what you love for yourself. If I was selling this horse or this camel, if I was selling it, I will know that it's worth much more than that. And I would want more. So I'm giving you more. One brother I saw today, he's buying manush. You know what manush is? Any Lebanese people? Manush? Ar Arabs? Egyptians? Yeah, do you say manush? El manush da. El ka'ak, yeah, like that, the dough. He's buying manush for tomorrow on Eid. Buying lots of manush. The brother loves him. I could tell he likes him for one reason because the other brother is religious yani, the word religious is not the right word but we can say a man who loves Allah and he loves that he loves Allah the man who is selling him said for example two hundred dollars what a lot he goes take it for 150 the other brother looks at him and says wallahi I'm giving you 210 I'm gonna give you more he says no yeah give me less you take more Wallahi, I just want less. Wallahi, I'm going to give more. It's very rare to see people arguing the opposite of everyone else. Mahuwa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bada al Islam gariban. Islam began strange. Wa sayaudu gariban kama bada. And Islam will come back strange the same way it started. Fatuba lil ghuraba. Glad tidings to those who are strangers. This is one of the meanings of strange. Like that. Who does that these days? They'll call you crazy. But no, no, no. You have a feeling. You have something inside of you, richness that no one else has. 
Who else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the one who finds himself or herself attached to the places and the people whom Allah loves. You feel comfortable when you're at the masjid. You feel comfortable with the people of the masjid. You see someone who looks a person, a woman or a man of deen, you feel comfortable, you feel at peace. You feel comfortable when the Quran is, is recited. You feel comfortable when somebody reminds you of something that Allah loves. You like it. You actually love it. This is a type of person who has a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love to them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, listen to this beautiful hadith. I've said it before, but it's amazing and really suits this point. That in Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Man aada li waliyan takes one of my righteous worshippers as an enemy. You are bad to them. فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I have declared war against that person. So be careful my dear brothers and sisters, we don't know who is the righteous person of Allah. He's not necessarily a famous person, not necessarily a person anyone knows, not necessarily a person that you see all the time in the masjid, not necessarily. You might see them, they might go to other masjids. Maybe a sister, she doesn't go to the masjid at all, I don't know. Maybe she goes sometimes, maybe she goes at night. But these are people who are inconspicuous. You don't actually know, they're not out there to show off. And sometimes some people who are popular and famous, they're also people of Allah. But what I'm saying to you is that you don't, we don't really know who they are. Not, not clearly. Could be you. Could be me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among them. So whoever is an enemy to one of these righteous people, I have declared war against them. So be very careful, my brothers and sisters. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there is nothing that my worshiper comes closer to me, more beloved to me, the thing that I love the most, that he comes closer to me with, than the things which I have made compulsory upon him or her. See this fara'id that we pray, the fard, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fard and said there's a punishment if you don't do them anymore. Like the five daily prayers, for example, the five pillars of Islam. Why did Allah make them fard? He made them fard because He loves them the most. He refuses to make something He loved the most as an option. Because He wants you to come closer to Him. Sometimes my father says, you have to call me every single day at this time. Baby, Abby, I've got this. I'm not accepting any excuse. You have to call us always at this time. Why? Because your parent loves you. He's teaching you how to respect your father and mother. To connect with them. Because if you don't, you're going to be unhappy. If you don't connect your family ties, you're an unhappy person. SubhanAllah. Unless, of course, there are exceptions. So then he said, And my worshipper keeps coming closer to me with what? So he comes closer to Allah with the fard prayers. And then some people keep getting even closer after the fard prayers with what? With voluntary acts, bin nawafil. So sunnah prayers are voluntary acts. Fasting are voluntary days. Other Ramadan is, is, is nawafil. Right? Doing umrah is a nafila. Doing sadaqah is a nafila. Anything that you're not asked to do, you don't have to do it, you do it. Wallahi al-azim, wallahi al-azim. Even directing someone lost on the street how to get to the shops or how to get to somewhere is a sadaqah. Muslim or non-Muslim. That's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Giving water to a bird is sadaqah. Avoiding walking near a colony of ants that you see in the park, you avoid it. Like you want to light up a barbecue, you see a colony of ants, you go, let's not do it here, let's do it over there. Is a sadaqah. Can you imagine an angel coming down to give you hasanat just for choosing to move away from the colony of ants or bees? So insignificant anyone can do it, subhanAllah. Smiling to your brother's face, a sister smiling to her sister's face. A husband and wife looking at each other. Brothers and sisters, I didn't even say smile to each other, but good in a good look. Just the husband looking at his wife and the wife looking at her husband. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. If the husband looks at his wife and the wife looks at her husband, نظر الله إليهما بنظرة الرحمة. Allah looks at both of them with the look of mercy. Is it hard to get to Jannah? Now that we think of it? You grab the vacuum cleaner. 
and you vacuumed your room or the lounge. You didn't do a good job with it. How old are you? Seven year old. What's your name? Mudakir Dakhil Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Mudakir grabs the vacuum. He doesn't know how to use it very well and starts vacuuming. He gets rewards and his parents get rewards. He's helping his parents, but his parents also get rewards for raising him. You as an adult, you do the same thing. You get rewards. SubhanAllah. And it's countless. Directing someone to the tap to make wudu, your reward is there. A person who can't see something wants to read it. Wallahi, it's in the hadith, literally. It says a person who can't see well, and you read something for them. Your grandfather, your neighbor, a person on the street waiting at the bus stop. Someone says, can you help me read this? Is a sadaqah. So my worshiper keeps coming closer to me with these little voluntary acts until I love him in a special way. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two types of love. The love that is for everyone and the special love that is only for specific people. The love that he has for everyone is that he loves for them to be guided and not go to hellfire and to come closer to him. So he brings to them signs. Wallahi, even the, the non-Muslim, he brings them signs all the time. Everybody. And then there's a special love. Those are the ones who deserve it like this. Then Allah says, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ As soon as I love him a special love, كُنْتُ سَمْعُهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become his hearing which he hears with. وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يَبْصُرُ بِهِ And his eyesight which he sees with. وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطُشُ بِهَا And his hand which he uses. وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا And his legs which he walks with. وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ And if he asks me, I will give him. وَلَإِنْ إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِذَنَّهُ And if he sought protection from me, I will protect him. وَمَا وَمَا تَرَدَّدْتُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ And I have never hesitated to do anything. Allah is saying, and I have never hesitated to do anything more than I have hesitated to do this. And that is to take the soul of my worshiper when he comes to die because he hates it and I hate to hurt him. يكره الموت وأنا أكره مساءته. He hates to die, and I hate to hurt him. رواه البخاري. Those who love Allah, Allah uses them and employs them for good work on earth. You know, sometimes. Some people call you at the most awkward times and they need your help and you answer them. You feel awkward, I mean, you know that? Allah has sent them to you. Allah has chosen you. You know when you're tired and you go out and do an act of goodness, Allah has chosen you. The fact that you have the ability to do that Allah has chosen. Listen to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا إِسْتَعْمَلَهُ If Allah loves a servant, a person, a worshipper, He uses him or her. He uses them. One time this brother, he said to me, Brother, I was at the masjid. I'd only been going to the masjid for about a week. And I only went there because there were some people I was meeting for marriage. Now, he used to go to another masjid, but that particular masjid, they used to meet there. He says, one day, this woman walks in, she's pregnant, and she needs help. Her husband walks in, and you could tell he's had problems. This brother's there, and they couldn't find the people of the masjid, the administration, the management, and they said, we need just to buy very simple furniture, at least a bed, because I'm pregnant, I just need a place to sleep. I need a bed in my home, we've got nothing, we haven't got a fridge, we haven't got food, we haven't got bed, nothing. This brother and his future father-in-law and his future wife, I, I did their marriage about a week later, they went to the closest furniture shop and bought for them a mattress, some blankets in Manchester. So we call it Manchester. What do we call it? Yeah, Manchester. <laughs> and 
a bed and some groceries and came back. They went to their house, unloaded it, and left. This couple is blessed till today, mashallah. And the other couple, Allahu alam what happened to them. But this was a sign for me when I looked at it. Wallahi, sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He is so truthful. If Allah loves someone, He will use them. He will send those people to you when you least expect it. You are special. And mark my words, any good you do to others, it will come back. Double, triple, mock, quadruple faults in ways you least expect it. Allah said, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah and avoids doing something that is wrong, Allah will open a door for them from places they least expected. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah told us also that one of the signs of Allah's love is this. Are you ready for it? I'm almost done, but this is probably the hardest one to handle. The more hardships you go through, and the more patient you are, the more it is a sign that Allah loves you. Man, that makes no sense. Makes no sense. It doesn't make sense to us as humans because we've been conditioned to think that way. It's negative. Allah says, You may hate something when it's actually good for you, and you may love something when it's bad for you. Rasulullah said, the amount of deeds, the, glory, the, 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 the gratification of deeds depends on how great the hardship that you are going through is. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people, He will give them hardships of some sort. Whoever accepts it and is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will be pleased with them. And whoever turns away and loses themselves and loses their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely, Allah also turns away from them. So my brothers and sisters, the ones who go through hardships and are patient, patient means you don't do, not mean you don't do anything about it, you do something about it, but what do you do? You don't abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't say, what's happening to me? I'm going to give up. Listen to what Prophet said. He said, a person keeps calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, do not give up you and insist for a person may be calling to Allah and then suddenly they give up on their dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives up on them they turn away from Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have always about to be giving them remember my brothers and sisters when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you something maybe it's not good for you right now maybe what's happening to you now is something for the future we hear all these celebrities they talk about it they give these motivational speeches I mean really they're simple to a Muslim we hear them every day and they say, I hit rock bottom before I could go back up. And this wall, I had to put my back towards and I saw only in front of me, man. And then everybody goes, that was the most motivational speech ever. We hear 10 times more motivational than that, mashallah, coming from above seven heavens. Yet these people are seeing it. We should see it too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never leaves anyone out. And if my worshippers ask you about me, I'm close. I'm close. I'm always close. Zakaria alayhi salam. Walam akum bidua'ika rabbi shaqiyya. Oh my Lord, I've never been with my dua to you unblessed nor left alone. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a servant, it means that that worshipper will be loved by the angels. And it will be loved by everyone else on earth. If Allah loves someone, He tells Jibreel, I love a certain person, so love him. So Jibreel loves him. Then He tells the angels, Allah loves so-and-so, so love him. All the angels start to love him. You know how many angels there are? Don't worry about it. You will never know. You know how many stars there are? More than the grains of sand on earth, scientifically proven. And I have a science background. Doesn't mean I know everything. I don't know astronomy. I just read that somewhere. There are more stars in the heavens than the grains of sand on earth. And there are more angels than all the stars. Rasulullah tells us the long hadith that there is a Bayt al-Ma'mura Ka'bah up there. Ever since it was created, 70,000 angels enter it and leave. They make tawaf and they leave and they never return to it. And it's never empty. 
70,000 up to 70,000. How many are there? My brothers and sisters, they love this person. And then their acceptance is on earth. Wallahi, even an enemy looks at you and can't help but respect you. They'll fight you, they'll kill you, and they'll say, that was a worthy fight. That was a respectful person. And they'll say good things about you. I've seen it. Historians write this all the time. They write about Salah al-Din Ayyubi, for example. How many enemies say he's a loving man, he's a respectful man. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the love even of your enemy towards you. And lastly, and this is the best one, I think for me, because I see young people here. The Prophet وسلم, told us, Ashab Ataib Habibullah. Ashab the youth. Boy or girl. Ataib the one who is always seeking Allah's forgiveness. I'm sorry, Allah. I'm sorry, Allah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry again. I'm sorry again. Oh, Allah, forgive me again. Forgive me again. And how many times do I have to ask Allah to forgive me? I'll just keep going. Oh, Allah, forgive me. And I said I'm not going to do that again, but here I am. Oh, Allah, forgive me. See that person? With us, humans, me, even as a parent, my son or my daughter keeps doing that. A friend keeps doing that over and over again. What's my reaction going to be? What's our reaction? Right? My God, you keep doing that all the time. You don't deserve anything. You're a beep. We say all the words under the sun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the one who does that is my beloved. Obviously, it's a sincere person. But you know, young people, they have a lot of hormones. And they keep forgetting and they can't have them. They've got influence sometimes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to lose them. He says, come back. Atta'ib means, Tawba means, Tawba. Who knows what Tawba means? What's the literal meaning of Tawbah? To come back, to return, to return. That's the meaning of Tawbah. He is the beloved of Allah. She is the beloved of Allah who constantly returns back to Allah. Always return, my dear brothers and sisters. And Allah will help you and cleanse you because He loves you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among His beloveds. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us feel the love that He has for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the patience and the perseverance to pass through this temporary world until we meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to His Prophet, Oh Allah, may it say, say it to us too. The hereafter is better for you than this former life. Soon you will come to us. Soon you will come to us. Just be patient a little longer. A little longer. It's not going to be long. You will come back to us and the hereafter is better for you than this world. Trust in Allah, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten your hearts. Thank you for listening.